Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This week we're working on this Lego themed cake with the top tier a little bit different than the standard round cake with a face on it. We're aiming more towards what an actual Lego head would look like. So we're starting out with our six inch round cake and I'm just placing it straight onto my acrylic working board. I have not stuck it down. And then I'm just adding my filling and stacking as usual until we are four layers of cake high. Then I'm starting to take off the very top edge to round it out for that Lego head look. I'm only going to be ganashing the top three quarters just to seal it in and give it some stability. For that rounded edge at the top, you want to take an acetate smoother which you can bend in your hand to create that rounded edge. For the neck area, I'm going to be gluing together round foam core circles. I think these were roughly about 4 inch, but you just want to make sure yours are in proportion to the size of head that you're making. And then just marking in two holes either side, which is where our internal supports are going to go. These supports are going to run all the way from the bottom cake, up through the neck and into the Lego head to make sure that the Lego head stays on top and doesn't topple off. I then want to glue my circles together, trying to avoid putting any glue where we drew the circles. Once all that's stuck together, I'm taking my scalpel and cutting out the circle sections out the top layer, and then through to the bottom layer. You'll see where your scalpel pokes out at the bottom, so you're easily able to remove the bottom section. To clean up the jagged edges on the inside, you can just place a pencil or a straw inside and give it a good wiggle. This will also widen the hole a little bit and smooth out any rough areas. I've then got my 7 inch cake already covered in ganache. There's always tutorials on my vanilla cake recipe, my ganache recipe, how to cover a cake with ganache in the linked videos in the description below. I'm placing my neck template in the centre, pushing down a straw to mark the holes for the bottom of the cake. I'm now adding my second layer of ganache to the head to make it nice and secure. Once that's done, I'm adding some ganache to the neck and pushing this down centrally on top of the cake. Once it's in position, I'm going to ganache around the neck to fill in any gaps so it doesn't show through to our sugar paste finish. You then want to place another working board on top of the neck and give the cake a flip, which is why we didn't stick our initial cake down. We want to be able to remove this board and then do the same on the top of the head by carving it into a nice curve. You just then want to do the top to make sure it matches the bottom. Once it's all set, dampen the whole cake with water and cover it in some yellow sugar paste. Everything I use will be linked in the description box below. I'm just wrapping it around all the sides and bunching up the excess on the top. You want to try and get as many pleats out as you can from the top, constantly cutting off any large bulky bits that you don't need. There'll only be a certain amount of pleats you'll be able to get out. The others you'll just want to push them towards the centre of the cake, pushing them nice and flat and taking off the excess. Lego heads have a little stud on the top, so most of the stud will hide this. Then we're going to carry on trying to buff and smooth out any pleats and seams. I'm cutting off the excess from the bottom before placing a greaseproof circle on the top and giving it another flip. In hindsight, I could probably have used the draping method to cover this cake, but I was initially going to cover the whole neck and head in one, but then decided to cover it separately. So I'm just taking off any excess sugar paste here that's adding bulk to the underneath and then cutting out a strip of paste to cover the neck separately.
Then we're flipping it back over again and that grease proof circle is there just to ensure that the paste doesn't stick to our board and pull it all off. I've then got a long straight metal ruler and I'm just indenting the lid of the head all the way around. This Lego head is actually based on a Lego storage head which you can buy on Amazon or in the Lego store to keep your Legos in. Now we're turning our attention back to our 7 inch round cake. I'm first covering the board in some blue using the toilet seat method. Again this method is always linked in the description box to watch from start to finish. I'm then rolling out my sugar paste colours into strips. I'm choosing all the primaries of green, red, yellow and blue and making sure every single piece is identical in thickness. The easiest way to do this is to pass it through a pasta machine that's on the same setting. I have always recommended a pasta machine, especially when it comes to jobs like this. I'm also using my quilting ruler, which is another piece of kit I always highly recommend and I'll leave them both linked below. Quilting rulers are ace because you can see through them and you're able to cut strips in all different sizes and see what you're doing. Here I have all my yellow strips and the width of them will depend on how big you want your blocks to look. Here I'm just cutting one and a half inch rectangles and also some square versions and placing them on a foam mat so they firm up a little bit. I've done the same in the blue, the red and the green and then you can start adding them in different colour variations starting at the bottom and working your way up. This is simply stuck on with water. And I also measured my bricks so that the top layer would have a very slight overhang. You can just see the coloured sugar paste is sticking up ever so slightly above the cake. This is because I want to place more sugar paste on the top of the cake and would like to try and to get it to join if possible. For the top pieces, we're just using the same size strips but we're curving them before we cut them to make them easier to place on the top. You can see I've cut the red brick and I'm placing it in line with my red brick on the side and then taking my scalpel and cutting straight lines toward the centre of the cake. From this angle you can see what shape of bricks they make. It's kind of wider on the outer section and then they taper in towards the top as they get closer to the centre of the cake. I'm just adding all my bricks until the top of the cake is fully covered apart from a circle in the centre. I'm just taking my round cutter and cutting out a neat circle. Now this is not going to be seen as it will be under the Lego neck but I do want to make sure that all my paste is at the same height. So I'm just adding in this red circle and pushing my fingers down the holes so I can see where my straws need to go. These are bubble tea straws and I haven't cut them down. I'm inserting them right into the bottom of the 7 inch cake and you'll see these pieces sticking up. These are going to go into the holes on the neck and straight up into the head to keep it nice and stable. The extra straws I'm adding now are actually to hold the weight of the Lego head. So these ones are going in the centre and I'm cutting them down level with that red piece of sugar paste. So these ones going in now are flat to the cake, they're going to hold the weight of the head and the ones sticking up are just going to hold the head on so it doesn't fall sideways or backwards off the cake with it balancing on such a small neck. I'm then adding my ganache to use as a glue to stick the neck on and I'm lining up the holes in the bottom of the neck with the holes in the straws and gently allowing the head to slide down the straws. This is how it should look, coloured bricks all the way underneath and the red circle is hidden and we now have a nice central curved Lego head on a neck. The next thing to do is grab some more of your paste all in the same thickness and I'm punching out little circles with my plunger cutter. I'm then sticking these circles as the studs for the Lego bricks. You'll usually fit four on the inner row and maybe six on the outer bricks. Now 
Now for the Lego bricks themselves, I'm rolling out some paste, quite chunky, and slicing a rectangle with a knife. You'll see it's quite hard to get a perfect rectangle with a paste wanting to just squash under the pressure of your knife. So I take two smedges and I squash the paste back into shape, trying to get that sharper rectangle by squeezing them together. And here I've got my first little green rectangle brick. I'm also going to work on other different colours and sizes. Next up is the Lego face. This is the one that we've chosen for this specific cake, but if you look online, there are a few different Lego head storage tub faces to choose from. I've just traced mine onto some greaseproof paper and then run it over some black sugar paste to leave an impression to cut them out. Once you have your pieces, I've turned my greaseproof paper over and I'm using some veg fat to stick my pieces down onto. I'm just following the shapes of the pencil to lay them in position. Once they're stuck down, I'm covering the back in water so I can then stick this to the cake. You just hold the greaseproof paper up onto the cake, stick it into position and peel away the greaseproof paper to reveal that the face is all perfectly proportioned on the front of the cake. I'm then adding some catch lights and a large yellow disc to the top for the stud. The name is cut in the same way, just tracing it onto greaseproof paper, cutting out the letters with a scalpel, and I cut the letters out in white and then stuck them to a piece of black paste, cutting around them to create an outline effect. I'm doing the same here with greaseproof paper, sticking it to the cake with water, peeling off the paper to reveal a nice level and central name. The number has been done in the same way, but I've just stuck it to a cocktail stick. And now for our Lego bricks. I want it to look like they're cascading and falling, but you're not going to be able to stick these on on their own. They're gonna need a little bit of help with cocktail sticks, especially for the ones that are kind of hanging down the sides. So always remember to inform your guests to remove these and any internal supports before serving. But here it is, all finished. I love how it turned out, especially these colors, keeping it nice and simple with the primary colors, just makes it really stand out. And I also really love the shape of the top Lego head standing on its little neck, rather than it just being a cake with a face on it. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I just think this takes it to the next level. Hope you enjoyed this one, please leave me a comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.